All right, meditative prayers. Now, let me look at what it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I also want to read out a testimony here. Um, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2, he says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So he's saying things to God directly in the spirit, and those things are mysteries. All right. Okay. And then he goes on and says that. In verse. 14 or verse 13 wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret okay so let that person pray that he may have an interpretation of what they have said for if i pray in an unknown tongue my spirit prayeth or amplified says my spirit by the holy spirit prayeth but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? Paul said, I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding. Now, when he said he will pray with the understanding, he was referring to something. For in verse 6, he said, Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall it profit you? Except I speak either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. So literally speaking, if you read this properly, when it says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, let him pray that he may interpret. The interpretation he therefore gives to the tongues that he has spoken will either be he has revelation, he has knowledge, he, all right, operates and prophesies as a result of the interpretation or receives doctrine all right from god now so when he says he that prayeth i will pray with my spirit i will also pray with my understanding he's talking about not just um when you say you pray with understanding it's like oh that's you are not praying in the spirit you're not praying in the spirit it's spiritual form of prayer that came as a result of the interpretation that you have received to what you have said prior in tongues. Now, the interpretation doesn't mean the translation. Let's let's get this right. Interpretation is not translation. If I'm in, if I'm translating something, then as it's been said, I am given the. So you say it, then I translate exact words you used if i interpret something okay i mean it's just like saying that let if they give you a card um, the game people game uh, this, this game people play and they write something on the card and they say okay demonstrate it so that the people will be able to see what is on the card now if i said to you say it in another language so that people can translate it then I'll, you say it in the language and people will translate it but they say interpret it it means you go out and you demonstrate certain things with signs and people now say this is the word so there's a difference between interpretation and translation so an interpretation it says can come by revelation to you just one revelation massive revelation can come by knowledge can come if person prophesies all right can come also through doctrine now so when you are praying mentally or you are praying in the understanding which is a mental 
form of prayer, which is what we call meditative prayers. What really there is an understanding of what you are saying. There is, and I want to read a testimony and want to be back up. There is a spiritual understanding of what you are saying. What causes that form of prayer to be powerful and effective is because it is said with understanding. In other words, not just I know what they are saying, but it's I understand what is being said. So confessions must come out of a place of understanding, not just a place of, how will I put it, repetition. Okay, it has to come from a place of understanding. And so where there is understanding that comes as you say things, then there will be a strong impact all right, of those words upon the earth. Now, I want to read the testimony somebody sent to me uh, concerning meditative prayers, and it's important we explain this. And this person says, or she says, I'm a Nigerian living in Norway. I discovered the Covenant Nation accidentally on YouTube at one of my lowest points in my life. Since then, I have been a constant beneficiary of the online ministry in addition to my local church here. I have been praying to God to buy a house since last year. I had been getting rejections from the bank due to some complications and strident regulations. When this meditative prayer started, I decided to take it seriously. Now please follow what this lady did, because there's huge understanding here. In addition to the general morning sessions, I wrote out what I wanted in a house based on the scriptures. I recorded it on my phone and played it regularly even when I was asleep. Now you can see understanding coming into things. All right, and you, you're gonna see the level of understanding she brought into it. The housing market in Norway is very fierce and expensive. It is not unusual to read in the news that houses are sold for all right, one to two million krona above the already high asking price. To be honest, my faith was shaking. But every time I was afraid, I would play worship songs to keep calm. Thankfully, I got a, fin a financing letter from a bank in February, but it was to expire on the 15th of March. On the 10th of March, I was really weak because so far, the house in the market that fit my spec were above 4.9 million. All right, krona. It's their currency in Norway, purchase price that the bank had approved for me. The minimum house in my spec was 6.1 million. I could not concentrate that morning, so and so to pass time, I was just joking, bidding on different houses. I would see a 10 million house and bid 5 million for it and be laughing at myself, imagining that the real estate agents and the owners will be cursing me out for my ridiculous offer. Suddenly, I received a call. It was the agent from the 6.1 million house. She said that my 5 million was lower than the highest bid of 5.2, which the sellers did not accept. She also said the sellers were not in a rush. The house belonged to somebody who had just moved somewhere and the loan on it had been paid, so there was no mortgage repayment pressure for them. I said it was fine that I would increase my bid to 5.4 million. She called back. She called my bank to confirm my financing, but my banker was a bit upset with me that I bidded beyond the 4.9 million limit. Prayerfully, I made a business case to the banker and pointed out that the house has a basement that could be rented out. She agreed to increase the max to 5.4 million. Suddenly, other people started bidding for the house. I eventually won the bid at 5.5 million. So I had to go back to the bank and say I did not have the extra 100,000 but that I will have it before the takeover date of April. And surprisingly, the banker said, okay, that is how I bought the house that 10th of March. The miracles. When I woke up that morning, I did not know I would own a house that day based on the conditions of the market and my approved financing. The house had everything I asked for, I asked God for in my meditation prayer and even more, the rental unit. 
God touched the mind of the banker to increase my loan financing by 500000 The house has a rental unit that will pay the additional 500000 and even for some of the parts of the house I'll be living in. God gave me an invisible additional financing by allowing the sellers to agree to a sales price which was 600000 below the asking price, which is very unusual. My financing officer was sorry. My financing offer was to expire the fifteenth of March, and the first, and the first a house within my budget came to the market was March sixteenth, with the view of bidding twenty third and twenty fourth. I'm so confident in the efficacy of meditative prayer that I'm already tapping into it for my proposed real estate investment business. Like how CCN expanded in COVID nineteen times, I will also expand in these times when people are complaining about how difficult it is to enter the real estate market. Then she says, this is my confession below. I promise God I will testify. Please praise God with me. Now here's the confession, which I want us to see, which is the understanding that she brought to it, not just the repetition. Here's how the confession goes. My dear Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I thank and I worship you for life, health, and wealth. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof. I have come to ask you for a house, knowing that your word in Matthew 7, 7 says, When I ask, I shall receive. I want to buy a new house because you promised in 2 Samuel 7, 10 to 11, that you will appoint a place for me, that you want to plant me, so that I will live in my own house and be disturbed no more. Let me repeat that scripture. Some of you might want to look it up. 2 Samuel 7. 10 to 11. All my afflictions are past and you have given me rest. This is the confession. The house will be in a good neighborhood in called the area because you promised me in Isaiah 32 verse 18 that I will abide in a peaceful habitation and secure dwelling. Isaiah 32 18. The house you have given me has its own garden because you said in Jeremiah 29 Sorry, let me try to get um, trying to get the okay, the mixer are back. Because he said in Jeremiah 29 and verse 5 that I will build houses and live in them, and that I will plant gardens and eat their produce. And what's going on with mixer? All right, my house will be a detached house or semi-detached house. Sorry, the mixer out is gone. All right, because you commanded in Deuteronomy 6, 9 that I shall write your commandments on my doorpost and I can't do that in an apartment building. Now see how much understanding she's bringing. My house has a minimum of three rooms because in John 14, 2, you said, your house has many rooms, and as your child, I have plenty of rooms too. The room will have ample storage because in Proverbs 3.10, you told me that my storage will be filled with plenty when I honor you with my resources. I trust you divinely to direct me to the particular house and through the process because Proverbs 24, 3 to 4, you promised me that your wisdom, by your wisdom, my house is built. And by understanding you have bestowed upon me, my house is established. By your divine knowledge, the rooms of my house are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. You have established my steps as promised in Proverbs 16, 9. I will possess the house before March 15 because the market will turn into a buyer's market the way you turned the tide of the Jordan River. You promised in Deuteronomy 11 verse 31 that I bow to cross over the Jordan, the huddle, to go and take possession of the house you have given me. I am not worried about where I will get the money to finance the acquisition because you promised me in Philippians 4 19 that you will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I am not swayed, said this, by my current financial reality in the fiscal realm because you promised in Joshua 24, 13 
that you have given me a land which I did not toil and cities which I did not build. And I will live in them and eat from the vineyard and olive groves that I did not plant. I am confident, she says, that my prayer is answered because nothing is impossible with you. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Thank you for the answers. I shall let everyone know about this miracle from you to me because of Daniel 2. All right. Daniel 4 and verse 2. And put Amen. And then she wrote her name in bracket, your beloved daughter. All right. So she went into, you can see the level of understanding that she put into um, the practice of that particular thing. Um, making sure and what she was doing and this is very important and this is where personal integrity comes in what people do is that they jump all right to conclusions without evidence so every single thing that she wrote and this is where you have to be true to yourself when you are making a confession and this is how you edit the confession which is what she has done when you write out the confession and you make it the confession, any part that you are void of an explanation of how that thing will happen, a question mark goes up in your heart. Now, the reason why confessions of people don't work is that they don't confront those question marks there and just continue to say what they are saying. In other words, your heart is asking you and telling you that there needs to be evidence for this particular thing you are just saying here. I need to have evidence here. Bring the evidence so I can take it in and process this thing for you. It's almost like you saying you apply for something and then they say, well, there's a form you didn't bring. Go and get it. If you bring the form back, we will, we will, this thing will be granted to you. You don't bring that particular form. You are, you are shouting you are, and all of that. You don't get it. So your heart is telling you, and that's why. So when you say gardens, uh, what, what, where's the assurance that like you need to have a garden? Show us in God's mind. So she went and looked for scriptures and then put it there. And so everything she was saying, she was reinforcing. So there are what you call points of temptations in, all right, everything you would do. It's just like saying that I'm going to start a business and I'm going to grow the business to be global. The first thing your heart will ask you, is that where are you going to find the capital to get this business? We need, we're not saying give us money, give us evidence from scripture that there'll be a guarantee that capital will come into your hands. Then you say, all right, you get this capital. Okay, how are you going to get this business to become global? Um, what is going to happen? How? We need evidence here. What is going to happen? Is it that it just is magic? All right. Now, people don't, they don't want to do that mental work. What they just want to do is just, let me just be saying, they said we should be saying, they said we should be saying, they said we should be saying. Then, then they say, then after time they'll say, well, it didn't work. So you've got to edit the confession, which is what she's doing there. And at every single point within that confession, until your heart is satisfied, that the, all these things that I've said, I can back every single manifestation I desire here with an evidence I found inside the word of God that I can speak forth, all right, out of my lips. Because faith is the evidence of things not seen. So even though you don't yet see it, in faith, you have the evidence there. So what you're confessing is the evidence. That's what you're, you're bearing witness to. That's what faith is. You're, 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 it's not based on your desire for something. It's not based on wishful thinking. It's based on evidence. All right? So why will this happen? Because this is the evidence here. And your heart always asks you for the evidence. And that's that scratching you feel on the inside that is called doubt. In other words, the heart is telling you that you haven't provided necessary evidence, all right, for this particular thing that you are declaring out of your lips. Now, indeed, you desire it strongly and you want it strongly, but where is the evidence? So I would suggest, and I said this morning, I'm just going to use this morning to share, all right, on this. I would suggest that, all right, that when you write out your confessions again, when they say put scripture up back in there, what you are in effect saying here is the evidence. Now, anywhere or anything you see now we're not saying that look if let's just say um i am let's just say this i am bidding for a job and i happen to have a classmate who who is the biggest influencer in terms of in the setup for the job. I just saw him there and 
I didn't know it was good. It was just there. That's not evidence that I'm going to get that particular thing. That actually could be a lying vanity, which is what people now look at. All right? And then the Bible says you went to Egypt. In other words, you shifted your heart to somebody instead of evidence of Scripture. So when this person doesn't act the way they felt they should act based on their emotional connection, then people get angry. Evidence is what you see inside the Scripture, regardless all right of 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 appearances because once you shift your belief to something external it is in god's love and compassion to remove that supporting structure so that your eyes comes back which is what happens to people and people say the whole thing did not work what god simply did was to take away that thing on the outside you are now looking at so that you can look back at his word and if your heart sinks and says oh and all of that that means you 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 know the, as somebody said to be disappointed is to have put your trust in something or somebody outside of god that's what leads to disappointment when you say i'm disappointed you put your trust in the wrong place so you put your trust back into all right the evidence there that you have so you have to do that work it's called understand so i will pray with the understanding all right, it tells us which of the ground brought forth hundredfold. It says, He that received the word with understanding. So there is an understanding, all right, that she put in, and there's an understanding you've got to put in, all right, in terms of that. So when you're doing private meditative prayers here, uh, spend time praying in the spirit because this understanding, and so when you come to these places where there's those you have these um, stumbling blocks or strongholds that are, are holding that this thing won't come to pass there's no explanation for these things then that's what we're saying and begin to pray in the spirit that you may get an interpretation all right of that particular situation start praying in the spirit over that particular thing those areas just start praying in the spirit start praying in the spirit and then after some time you start getting the evidence which can come as a revelation which can come as knowledge to you but you not get the evidence for that particular thing you put it in there all right so you can start praying that back in the understanding there okay and then you begin to pray uh, all right in the understanding and then it starts direct to you get to another place is a naughty issue don't overlook don't don't say no my my just be saying cliches my case is different i'm a child of god i'm born of a king um, don't just start throwing things around that don't don't minister to your heart don't get to that place all right inside your heart where there's a change the bible tells us of abraham and being fully persuaded persuasion that he was fully which means he wasn't partially persuaded he was fully persuaded the word persuade means that it's almost like an outside influence convinced him about the fact that this thing was going to come to pass. So persuasion is based on interactions. Like, let's come, let us reason together. And then he was persuaded. So at the beginning, it was like until he was fully persuaded. And when he was fully persuaded, so what happens is that persuasion must go on through a conversation between the Holy Spirit and your own heart using the medium of God's word to provide evidence to you that this thing we guarantee it will happen so you can speak all right from that particular evidence and let me tell you what is so strong about the evidence that the holy spirit provides if something apparently goes wrong on the outside if you look back at the evidence he has given to you you will see it in the what he has said here that that is the pattern in scripture of it happening if you open the life of David, you see that just before David got that particular thing he got, he experienced those things. Joshua, you see, um, Joseph, the experience, you see biblical characters, you see it hidden in scripture that because you are working with the evidence, all right, of God's word that is there. Okay? So you're writing out your confession here, right? What you do is you write out what your heart truly is reaching for. Don't say that because I don't know how this thing will happen, I will cut down the dream. Don't cut down the dream. Because once your heart doesn't really want some, she didn't cut down on the type of house she wanted. All right? But what you do is you raise your consciousness through the persuasion of the Spirit in Scripture 
to the point where your belief matches that desire that you have. So don't make the mistake of saying, I will cut my coat according to my size. Or, or what do they say? Okay? According to the cloth that is available at that time, or so whatever you say. But you put your desire there. And then you now say, all right, I'm writing out this confession here. I'm writing out, ah, I've jumped some steps here. I just said this here. All right. How was the evidence for this? What's the evidence for that? What's the evidence for this? And then begin to pray over it. And then you see the evidence there in scripture and it ministers to you. And then you have an understanding. So you are persuaded. So, so even if people are saying what they are saying and speaking discouraged, once you open up your evidence, it will tell you, a thousand faults you left ten thousand to not come near you that this is not a thing that we are believing together all right you are doing this as an individual so what people say and do no longer affects you all right in any way all right so as i share that this morning we'll continue our confession is a different topic but for people writing out their personal confessions which you start you should start doing all right um understand how to write out these things and important thing is the word of God works when you are not thinking about that. It's good. I mean, look at how it happened for her. She woke up that morning. It wasn't like she 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 got closer to it. That the steps she was getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. No, it just happened. All right, Joseph wasn't getting closer and closer. It just happened. All right, so it's not based on in that's when I talk about believing improvement of your condition. It's just based on the manifestation of the spirit which can be sorted all right so don't let it don't start judging god by the improvement of condition oh they called me uh, i applied for a job here three companies have got that's not keep looking at the evidence those three companies can decide not to give you a job they can't do that but it doesn't change the evidence it might be all right a company you're not even thinking of that you didn't apply about that somebody is talking to a friend of yours and the friend suddenly remembers you and says i think this person can fit into this job you didn't even apply you get to the place so don't look at it just as something that will be a natural process where we will go from grade one grade two all right you just she woke up that man she said it was a joke to her i'll just be bidding lower and in the process of doing that she just did it but that thing, she was moved by the Holy Spirit, all right, to do that particular thing. All right, then.